Hello, my name is Andrew McGonigal and with Gabby Deal, uh, we are here to talk about a project using FME server for biological data validation for compliance for Fortescue Metals Group. Uh, we'll just start with a quick uh, video on uh, Fortescue Metals Group's operations. To be truly innovative, we must challenge the status quo. At Fortescue, we are always generating new ideas, striving to do things better, whilst always keeping our teammates safe. This commitment has ensured we're at the forefront of the global resource industry. Driven by a unique culture and values, Fortescue is now one of the world's lowest cost iron ore producers. And we've done it all while empowering each other and acting with integrity. Welcome to the Fortescue Hive, our integrated operations centre in Perth, Western Australia, where our team remotely operate our world-leading assets and infrastructure across three mining hubs in the Pilbara. Commanding our fleet of autonomous trucks. The world's fastest heavy haul railway. Our port operations here in Port Hedland. Working together to ensure we remain a reliable supplier to our customers. We're building a diverse, inclusive workplace that reflects our community. And ensuring communities benefit from our success by delivering positive social and economic benefits. Offering Aboriginal people sustainable long-term careers. Creating economic opportunities for local businesses. Investing in the future of our regions. Our team is committed to safeguarding our environment, working closely with our native tidal partners to identify and protect important cultural heritage. Now, we're using this innovative thinking to fight the most pressing issue of our time, climate change. We have set industry-leading stretch targets to be carbon neutral by 2030, decarbonising our operations by investing in renewable energy and green technologies to eliminate the use of diesel. With Fortescue Future Industries, we are setting out to become the world's leading energy and green products company, building on our track record of developing major projects to support the world's transition to green energy driving economic growth and creating jobs in Australia and around the globe. Making a better tomorrow for the people that matter to us most. Because when innovation is needed to change the world, Fortescue is the future. The image shows uh, Fortescue's integrated mine and main port and rail operations um, and many of which were featured in, in the video that we've just seen. Fortescue manages over 5.7 million hectares of land and adheres to federal and state legislation for environmental compliance. As part of that environmental compliance, Fortescue has conducted 13.1 million hectares of biological surveys including 1.5 million hectares in 2021 alone. The Fortescue Environmental Governance Team engaged the geospatial team to collaborate on a solution to validate biological survey data received from consultants. Environmental data custodians were spending a lot of time reviewing data submissions, checking for errors and liaising with consultants to ensure data quality standards were met. Incorrect or erroneous data can lead to a potential situation where you have an alignment of errors that can lead to a compliance breach. Accurate data is central to Fortescue's ability to gain environmental approvals and maintain compliance with existing approval conditions and commitments. The key challenges that the project had to overcome included validation of data to Fortescue's biological survey data model and guidelines. This internal model and its guidelines has been developed based on Fortescue compliance and reporting of flora and fauna. The solution needed to be flexible and dynamic 
to allow for future model and guideline updates and changes. It also had to undergo cybersecurity review to ensure it met Fortescue standards, including uh, penetration testing. Penetration testing is required whenever any of Fortescue's applications or systems are externally exposed through the web. Finally, ensuring the user interface was intuitive and allowed for seamless communication between the consultant and environment team. It was also important that the solution complemented and integrated with existing Fortescue applications. Despite providing consultants with detailed templates and instructions, adherence to Fortescue's standardized data model, model was difficult to enforce. If there were any issues missed in internal checks conducted manually, those, those issues could flow through to our uh, corporate database, and this could have potential implications on, on compliance. So I'll pass over to Gabby now, who's going to discuss the solution that was implemented with FME Server. Thanks, Andrew. Um, yeah, for our solution, the Fortescue Geospatial team identified FME Server as the ideal platform for a web-based self-service solution called PETS, the portal for environmental data submission to ensure the integrity of its environmental survey data. We did this by automating its validation and integration with Fortescue's geospatial database. OneSpatial developed an external web interface hosted on FME server that enables consultants to upload biological survey data, as well as a validation process integrated with Fortescue's document record system to validate the user and their survey data. This involves some configuration on the FME server to expose it outside of the internal network and to communicate properly with document record systems, as well as dedicated engines for these self-service jobs. The validation system sends notifications to the consultant, the project manager from the Fortescue environmental governance team and the geospatial team, so everybody's kept informed of data submissions. And the validation rules are fairly flexible, and this allows for new criteria if environment data standards require modifications. One spatial designed the architecture and data flow diagram for the solution as shown here on this slide. The gist of it is on the left, the consultant external from the internal network accesses the web interface hosted on FME server. They submit the data package as a zip file containing shape files. It then goes into the FME project for processing and a report is returned to the user via FME data streaming and email that tells them whether or not the processing was successful and if any changes need to be made. The, the data then flows in, through FME server into our internal systems, and this then gets approval from the environment manager before entering the production geo database. This is just an overview of the process. So this is the portal that the consultant sees at the first step. The environmental consultants given access to this web form. Some of the fields are pre-filled out from authentication with Azure Active Directory, and they have the option of adding in an, al an alternate email for notifications. They then enter a few details and the data package as shapefiles submitted as a zip archive. PEDS is integrated with our document control system, so that checks that the document number assigned to the data package is valid as it is uploaded. After validation, the HTML report is streamed to this page just at the bottom of the form so that the consultant can get immediate feedback on whether or not the submission was successful or not. And if not, they get details on which features exactly need revisions and within those features exactly what needs to be changed. This is fantastic in comparison to our previous process, which involved repeated interactions with the environment and geospatial data custodians to get the data uh, looking correct uh, for our geodatabase. Supported by OneSpatial, we delivered the web interface hosted by FME servers in built Tomcat server and integrated with Fortescue's Azure Active Directory for security. The various other elements of the solution were all bundled into an FME server project. That includes the validation rules file and the workbench systems themselves. 
we found this approach with the project bundling makes it very easy to easy to update between environments. The project itself included the workbenches that checks data on submission, enters it into the geo the database and performs regular updates just to make sure everything's in sync. In addition to checking the document numbers, the main processing workbench also reads the environmental data model and uses it to check the names, data types and values of all attributes. And it just makes sure they all line up as well as the overall geometry of each feature type. It also does some generic geometry checks and tests that the data is within the general extent of the survey area. It rejects geometry with slivers or overlaps or anything that looks a bit dodgy to maintain the integrity of the corporate geodatabase. That's the FME side of it. And once the data has been submitted and validated by FME server, FME publishes it to a staging environment, and that's integrated with Vertigis, Geocortex Essentials and Studio Workflow. The environment manager then reviews and improves this data within this um, space. And this on the screen here is the web map that the Fortescue environmental manager sees when they're approving the data. So they see the overall geometry and they can go through each data set just to verify um, that it all looks correct. And once approved, it is published to Fortescue's Esri Arc SGU Geo database for ongoing compliance reporting and for use in downstream business processes that tap into the geospatial environment data sets. So far, the benefits. This project has been delivered on a soft rollout, and we found so far that it improves data integrity, and this in turn mitigates the risk of non-compliance, and that increases Fortescue's ability to get environmental approvals faster. It also frees up the Fortescue environment Government governance, sorry, and geospatial teams to spend less time doing manual checks and sending data back and forth by emails to meet standards. And it gives us more time on more critical jobs or further developments. The automated checks are more reliable and have a lower risk of missing common errors than manual verification. Um, so that mitigates the risk of potential environmental non-compliances or breaches. And the flexible design means that we can adjust the validation rules as government reporting requirements change or expand the application beyond biological surveys to help automate other Fortescue departments processes with a similar system. So yeah, as I alluded to, as the app is currently used by a small team, the first steps from here are to roll it out to more consultants to enable further time savings and ultimately expand the whole application to save to save time across other departments. The project has also given us valuable experience deploying self-service web apps with FME server, so we can empower more of our users with more self-service workflows. And these will help continue to maintain data integ integrity within the GS database. Thank you for listening.